Hello and welcome to the Ray Show Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Ray, and we are recording live from the lab at Cine Athens in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia. And hey, everybody, we made it. It's October. It's Halloween season time. All that good shit. I'm sure everybody's excited. So uh, we've got a very Halloween appropriate guest today. We have the mighty Nick Holmes from the mighty Bloodbath and the mighty Paradise Lost. Uh, Nick's super cool. And uh, he is, uh, we'll be talking about Bloodbath's excellent new album, Survival of the Sickest. And I'll tell you right now, it's sick as fuck. If you have not checked it out, do so immediately. But we'll have that chat coming right up. We are recording down here at the lab at Cine, where we're getting ready for the live podcast taping on Wednesday night. Um, By the time this comes out, you'll be about 24 hours away. So you still got time to uh, head on down to Athens. You can find all the information at AthensCine.com. And we're going to have she, he, he. That evening, as well as the comedic stylings of Farrah Johnson. So get your ass down to the lab here in Athens, Georgia. But without further ado, let's get to our chat with the mighty Nick Holmes. Johnny Ray with the Ray Show podcast. Today we have the death metal master, Nick Holmes (laughs) of the mighty Bloodbath and Paradise Lost on the podcast how are you doing this morning, Nick? Hey, man. Uh, I'm, I'm good, yes. Thank you for that fantastic intro. Yes, I, I'm, I'm great. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, hey, uh, Bloodbath has just released Survival of the Sickest. I mean, it's it just last week. It's fresh from the fires of hell. Um, I've, heard, uh, I've, I've heard it was a challenging album to complete for you guys. So given the state of the world, could you shed some light on those challenges you faced? Um, the, well, the biggest problem from, from my perspective was just getting to Sweden to, to record the vocals because every time we, we booked a flight, there was another lockdown so we, and then we couldn't leave the country. So we kept having to stagger the recording and then, you know, one month became three months and then, uh, you know, everything was very staggered. So it, it was recorded over quite a, quite a long time. You know, the drums, the drums were recorded like a, a year before I even did any vocals at all. So it was, um, so, but I mean, with that, with that said that, for, for writing the thing, we, we had longer to write it as well. So that I think that was maybe perhaps that was beneficial in a different sense. But but yeah, the recording, it was kind of just get, kept getting put back a lot. But, you know, we got there in the end anyway. So Absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't sound like it was recorded over that length of time. It sounds so fresh and live. I mean, just like, like you guys are in the studio together. Uh, but that, like yeah. drilling down on this one, there's so many bangers, you know, Zombie Inferno carved to die you know and then you've got this super evil monumental closer with no god before me and that song you know it reminds me of how diverse the death metal that we grew up on was in a sense and you know it's not all about speed and brutality you know and you're reminded just with that punch of that last that closing track um tell me about a little bit about these songs you know how they came together in your head yeah, I mean, like you say, I mean, the the, the music, the death metal music, you know, I, I, I grew up with, there, there was always more to it, you know, and they, they had fast long, there was fast songs, slow songs, parts were, of the songs were more extreme than the other parts. But um, yeah, I think you can kind of get a little bit bogged down and just try and make everything extreme and then you lose lose a song, you know, and it was always about songs, you know, so, um, so I mean, that's very important to us as, you know, kind of old school guys, in inverted commas. So, uh, so we, you know, and it was also, you know, as well, I mean, a lot of the bands we were listening to, um, particularly some of the other guys, you know, uh, were the Florida bands. And there were so many bands coming out of Florida at one point. It was almost like every death metal band was coming out of Florida in the whole of the US at one point. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, that, that sort of period, you know, the early Morbid stuff, uh, Massacre, the early death stuff. Yes, um, yes. I was always very, uh, very much on our minds. But then, you know, the, the whole thing started in Sweden as well, which was a very different sound as well, you know, and that kind of became a very kind of um, staple sound of the death metal scene in the sort of like late 80s, you know, so. Yeah, and I, I just think an outsider, you know, fr- that looking inside on the genre would not realize what you just mentioned, how many diverse sounds there are within that, you know, and there's so many more bands, as, as you've mentioned 
you know, I'm around your your age, and when we were into this shit, when it was first coming out, there was like seven or eight bands, you know, like you've said. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, I mean, everyone, you know, everyone started to use the same producer, which still happens now. But I mean, but there was still always a, I could always sort of tell the difference, uh, particularly earlier on. Anyway, I mean, after a certain time, everyone did kind of did sound the same. I thought, uh, but very early on, you know, everyone did have their own sounds and. Um, I guess you know the recording. You know, recording was a lot different then. Um, right. Even writing was a lot different, I guess, as well. You can do everything through the internet these days. But uh, yeah, there was um, certainly the, you know you, you could tell one band from another, which uh, makes me sound very old. But you know, a lot, <laughs> a lot of the time now, I have trouble uh, deciding who's who. You know. <laughs> right. Right. Me too, man. Me <laughs> too. That makes me sound like a dad, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of true, right? <laughs> well, uh, you know, take me back to those important teenage years when you're first getting turned on to art and music. What was it that attracted you to death metal? I think I was always a massive fan of horror movies. I spent, I mean, from being like six years of age to being about 12, I did nothing but watch horror films. I, maybe I, I shouldn't have been watching them at that age, but <laughs> no one, no, but I, but I did anyway. So, but, um, but yeah, I mean the you know the early Dawn of the Dead, the early sort of Romero films, um, the early Hammer House of Horror, the, the British horror films. Uh, there's a company called Amicus which make fantastic '70s horror films. Absolutely. I mean, I always, I, always, I mean, it was a natural move to get into music that was reminiscent of, of horror. So I mean, I guess you know stuff like Venom, uh, Slayer, the, you know the, the first sort of wave of, of the what and Bathory as well. That's everything was kind of about evil and darkness and Satan. And I just, I just, it just completely went hand in hand with the horror movies that I loved, you know, it just, it just fit with it. I mean, I was into metal anyway. I got into metal probably rainbow in the seventies when I was a little kid. And I, I always liked the rainbow, a rainbow and motorhead in the, in the kind of late, say early eighties, et cetera. So, so yeah, it just kind of, uh, it was a natural, I hear that word, but it's natural progression into extreme music, I think from, horror movies you know right exactly and uh, i mean me too those two just went hand in hand and like i said we're around yeah. the same age too and there was so much horror coming out just yeah. you know in the 80s for you know uh, oh, yeah, it was fun. i mean it, it, it kind of changed it i mean when when nightmare on elm street came out it kind of changed horror a lot you know that a lot of things started being more like around that that sort of sort of style but uh, i think you know i mean i think Hall- the original halloween film is is still one of the best kind of horror films absolutely it's like know, a hitchcock it's... movie when you look at it the shots yeah, and everything totally, yeah yeah um, it's still creepy and, yeah you know uh but you know uh, paradise lost and i would i would say you know mentioning one of your bandmates catatonia are both in the same universe as bloodbath but how do these two outlets having these two you know different outlets within the same universe how do they push and inspire one another Meaning, um, I think, going to going back to part Paradise Lost from, and then you I, know. I think it's, yeah, I mean, I think the things you 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 enjoy as a teenager, you know, you, you you carry those things with you all your life. I mean, particularly if you're passionate about it, you know, if you if you if you, I'm not talking about getting into something like a flash in the pan, I mean something that you absolutely adore. Which I mean, you know, horror films and death metal, those two things, we, we were so much into them as kids. But you know, I mean, I was obsessed with death metal when I was about sixteen. So it's like. I guess you're going to carry that with you all the way through your life. Even if you kind of take the jacket off for a few years, you, you're probably going to put it on again at some point, you know? Right, so, right. And, and when you've been doing it as long as I have, you, I've probably done it a couple of times now, but um, I, I do think whatever else, and also you get older, you, you also discover different music as well, and you can appreciate other music. Um, you know, I've only started to like Pink Floyd in the last 10 years, you know? So right. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah, but I, you know, at the time I just didn't feel ready for it when I was a teenager. But, um, but yeah, I just, you know, you, you obviously develop other tastes in music and other types of movies and blah, 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 and everything around it. But you still kind of break it back down to what you liked as a teenager because probably those are the best years of your life, really, you know, if you're lucky. Um, you know, I mean, my teenage years were great. You know, I, I loved being a teenager. But um, so, yeah, you kind of want to kind of go back. I guess it's like why, you know, middle-aged guys start bands when they're in their 50s and things, you know, because they're probably <laughs> trying to remember they're probably trying to remember when they're at their most happiest in life. <laughs> I, I agree with that. And I look back at it when I hear some of these death metal records, especially friends of mine that don't really understand the genre or metal. You know, I, yeah. I always say it looks it, it takes me back to when I was living in my parents' house, living in the, listening to music, watching horror films, skateboarding rent free. You know, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no, not a care in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, yeah, it's nice to kind of remember those sort of times, you know. So, uh, I guess th- doing this now, uh, 
it, it definitely does kind of get, you get that nostalgia thing and uh you know I, I really you know we all really love that you know about about this you know well, it's such a pure celebration of what this is all about. I mean, I get excited for you guys when I see you on stage, you know, just being able to do this. Now, do you have to, when you're writing more in the creation process, do you have to put any parameters within the band that help you channel that useful, that youthful inspiration, those, those years between 14 and 18 that are so important? I mean, for me, I, I would say for me, if it's, it's like, you know, if, if I'm writing lyrics, I just, I just, I kind of keep them completely on topic. I don't really wander too far down. Uh, you know, I, 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 there's no ambiguity. You know, once you kind of wander down a certain alleyway, once you're talking about the undead or or Satan, you know, there's only, you kind of know where you are with that. No, Absolutely. Gonna, there's no metaphors or necessarily within that. Although you could probably do it if you if you tried. But I mean, yeah, I mean, for me, it's just basically taking you know the uh, it's like an it's like an episode of Creep Show in a song version of it for me that, that's kind of where i go with it but i i mean i like that even i mean even the lyrics you know i just like to make them as extreme as the music is right so it's it's almost like another instrument within the whole sound you know uh the lyrics i would never take the lyrics off the off the uh the music or and vice versa just one big package you know i think oh the lyrics are fantastic i mean just you know these last three records that you've been on i mean every one of them they're like they're just like monuments you know um so so we've been talking a lot about horror and death metal. So October and Halloween are upon us soon. So what are some records or movies you go to to get into the spirit of the season? And that doesn't have to be death metal, you know, just whatever. Um, I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm trying to think. Now. Uh, well, obviously Halloween, uh, that kind of goes without saying. <laughs> yes. Um, um, I'm trying to think. I mean, it's, for, for me, it's... I kind of uh, I should have written down some movies, shouldn't I? I mean, I guess I mean films like I mean The Wicker Man is a great one. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. I mean, not not the one with Nick Cage. Yeah, I was about to say the original. I hope yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I actually I actually do quite like Nick Cage, but not that film. Um, uh, and uh, the the Omen, you know, the first Omen movie. Oh, the second one's yes. good as the first one, still the best. I mean, I, I always kind of go back to those old late seventies movies because. I was so scared when I was a kid watching them. Genuinely scared. I didn't go to, to the to the toilet or anything. It was, yeah. And I guess you know the the, the this kind of Evil Dead movie, the first second Evil Dead movies is great. That's kind of a fun film, but it's still quite scary at parts. But oh yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, I'm trying to think of new horror films. I still I still enjoy horror films, but they're kind of far and few between. You know, kind of classics. Me too, um, me too. I always go back to the old stuff that I've watched just over and over again. It seems like at this point. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, it's like a you know, it's like a it's, it's more soothing watching the old stuff. Um, so yeah, it's like putting on a nice comfortable jacket again, you know. So. Well, absolutely. Well, hey, I just saw Paradise Lost. We were talking about this earlier out in Las Vegas. Um, how did that go? How did that experience go for you? And I know you've had a lineup change since then. So uh, how are things looking for the fall tour? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, no, Vegas was absolutely great. Yeah, we, we, we it was, uh, and it was, no, it was really fun to do. It was, it, it reminded me of doing the 70,000 tons cruise, you know, in, but it was in, obviously inside a casino, but it, it was a similar vibe to it. It reminded me of it very much. Right. Uh, you know, everyone's there kind of just lighting their head down, having a good fun. And yeah, it, it very, it kind of reminded me of that kind of, you know, how it was with that. Um, but yeah, um, no, I mean, we, we kind of knew about uh, Waltry, our drummer at that time anyway. So it's, uh, so yeah, I mean he's he's a good mate. Um, I'm gonna kind of miss him on a personal level because we were you know we're good mates, but you know he's only a click away on the phone, so it's, it's right. I talk to him every day. I talk to him every day anyway, so it's I still chat with him constantly. So it's but yeah no it's it's all good. It's all you know. Um, he's a young guy. He's he's moving on. You know so uh, I, you know we wish him all the best. But yeah we've got another guy, uh, Gildo Gil 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 Gildo. I can't say his fucking name. Um, <laughs> Gildo, I believe. Yeah, uh, I've. I've He's, he plays with uh, Strigoi, uh, Greg Greggs of the band, um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's I've seen him play a couple of times. He's a great drummer, so hopefully, you know, for the, the tour, it's going to work out, and um, yeah, we'll take it right from there and see what happens. Well, cool, man. Well, getting back to uh, to survival of the sickest for for just a minute and just just a couple more for you. You know, you've got so many badass special guests on this record. Uh, Barney from Napalm Death. You've got Luke LeMay, who is Gorguts. And then you've got Mark Groove from Morgoth. How cool is that to have these artists take part in this just celebration of this music? Yeah, it's great. It's, um, you know, I mean, we, since I joined the band, we've always tried to get guests. I mean, we, we had um, 
Chris Rafer from Autopsy in the first one. Then we had Jeff Walker from Carcass and Carl from Bolt Thrower on the last one. Um, so, yeah, I mean, when we finished the album, we just think, okay, well, which which bits could we get some guests to sing on? But, I mean, we, we kind of make a point of always trying to get, you know, old school old school guys to do it. Um, so anyone who was kind of like listening to Bathory 983, you know, they're definitely up for it. And they, if they fancy doing it, then uh, we drop them a line. And, you know, if they want to do it, it's great, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's always fun to do it, and it adds an extra element to the whole thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, well, now, how are you going to be – Are you? do you ever see Bloodbath being as busy as Paradise Lost? Uh, no, because I, I don't think we, we, we don't really want to be doing, like, long tours because, uh, I mean, also Catatonia also do long tours as well. So, you know, we, we, we also we also want to have a little bit of home life. We don't wanna, We don't want to be on the road, like – you know, all year, you know, it'd be nice to have it <laughs> right. so, to come home at some time. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I mean, we, we, when I, when I did the band, it was um, more about, you know, we kind of just do, do the, the bigger festivals around Europe or wherever in the world wants us to play. Uh, we kind of fly in, do it and fly out. And uh, that's the kind of thing we've, we've sort of done pretty much since, since I joined the band, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, we, we might do some short tours perhaps or some, you know, maybe a week here, but, but nothing, like we do with our, our other bands, you know. Right, right. Well, what do you see? What do you see for uh, the t- uh, tour cycle for this record? Do you see any shows, some festivals, maybe next year for uh, for for this record with Bloodbath? Yeah, I mean, we've had such uh, bad bad luck getting over to the states. Um, we've had sort of visa issues, uh, which we haven't had with our, our other bands. Obviously, we wouldn't have been there in Las Vegas if we, if we had. Right. Um, so yeah, we've we've been very lucky with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're still going to, you know, continue to try and get over there and do. I mean, we were planning a, like a short sort of tour. It was like an East Coast, which would have been great. It was, it, it was you know, just a kind of pop in and fly out sort of thing. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can, you know, fulfill that in 2023. But um, yeah, we've had such rotten luck with the um, the visas. But um, yeah, we'll and that's. It, the, what is it? You know, I've seen you. You mentioned that it's because you guys are coming from different places. You know why is this so difficult for for them to approve these visas? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't actually know the reason why. You know, I, but but we were trying to figure out why why it might be an issue when we thought, well, maybe if, if it's applications from different countries, then maybe that could be something in that itself. Um, but we don't actually know that either, so I'm not going to go out and say, yeah, that was that's what it is because we we just don't actually know. Um, but I mean, like I said. You know, we, we always apply in very, very good time. We've, we've all done it before. It's not like we're kind of dragging our heels with things like that. It's just rotten luck, basically, you know. So right. hopefully going forward, we can figure it out, you know. Well, we hope you get that. We hope all that gets cleared up and you guys will be able to play in the States in 23. Uh, but, Nick, such an honor to talk to you, man. And uh, just best of luck with the record and, and bloodbath here in the future. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, and uh, thanks. Yeah, cheers. I appreciate the support, and uh, hopefully we can, you know, get over there in 2023. All being well, fingers crossed. How cool was Nick Holmes, man? Make sure you go out and get Bloodbath's new record, Survival of the Sickest. It is an absolute banger from start to finish, and uh, I'm just so so happy to have uh, had such a cool chat with him. So, uh, yes, that's our show for this week. Make sure to keep your eyes peeled all October. We're going to have some some very Halloween-centric guests coming your way. And uh, stay switched on, and we'll talk to you soon.